Welcome to episode 40 of Insects for Fun. This week, we have another listener request from a listener named Jamie out in New Zealand. Jamie reached out wanting to share about a special group of insects found only in New Zealand. And today, we're going to dive right into all the wacky facts about insects known as wedas. Weta is a common name for a group of giant flightless crickets found only in New Zealand. There are approximately 100 species of Weta, and they are split between two different families. The first family is Anostomatidae, and the second is Raphidophoridae. I'm not saying crickets within these families can't be found in other parts of the world, but what I am saying is that the 100 species that are referred to as Wettas cannot, with the exception of a few species that made their way to Australia. Jamie also informed me that weta without the macrons means filth in te reo maori, which is the native language of New Zealand. There are five kinds of weta in New Zealand, and I'm going to talk about all of them. There are the giant wettas, tree wettas, ground wettas, tusked wettas, and cave wettas. The first and most famous would be the giant wettas with the largest species known as Wedapunga, or Danacrita heterocantha. The genus Danacrita actually means terrible grasshopper, which I think is funny considering how they really don't do anything bad. And the name Wedapunga translates to God of Ugly Things. Ooh. These guys really just can't catch a break on the names, I guess. Now, this Weta can reach a length of 100 millimeters, or 4 inches and weigh up to 70 grams. This is not the average weight though. I believe on average, these giant wettas weigh around 30 grams, which is still a lot. Heavier than most sparrows, in fact. Fortunately, this is a gentle giant and feeds mainly on foliage, though it will sometimes feed on smaller insects as well. Its favorite food seems to be the native plants with large leaves, like the karaka, karamu, mamani, Mahoe and Kohe Kohe. Feels like I'm back in Hawaii or Hawaii. <laughs> there are 11 species of giant wetas, and for the most part, they look like really big camel crickets, but with a less arched back. They definitely are not like your average field or house cricket, but they are nocturnal and spend their mornings and afternoons hiding under fallen palm fronds, ferns, or other large plant debris. In the night, these critters come out from hiding and feed in trees or scavenge the ground. These crickets used to be found through Northland, Auckland, and the Great Barrier Island, but have only been able to survive on the Little Barrier Island due to habitat degradation and exotic animals hunting them. Now, many of you probably don't know exactly what it means on a map, so I'm gonna do my best to explain. New Zealand is an island country off the southeast coast of Australia, but it actually has two main islands, the North Island and the South Island. It's kind of similar to Japan actually, in terms of Hokkaido being the North Island and Honshu being the South Island of New Zealand. Now on this Northern Island of New Zealand, the very North tip is called Northland and right below that is Auckland. To the east of Auckland in the ocean, there are two islands, the Greater Barrier Island and the Little Barrier Island. For a long time, these giant weta have only been living on the Little Barrier Island. But now, thanks to breeding projects in Auckland, the giant weta is being reintroduced to the Northern Island of New Zealand. In 2020, weta punga were actually reintroduced to Northland, which was the first time they have been there in 180 years. That's pretty good. Now that you have an idea of their distribution, Let's get into the life cycle of these Chungus crickets. These Weta reach adulthood in around two years, and eggs are laid sporadically through many species between October and December, with their life cycles not really reliant on seasons. That being said, the eggs of Weta Punga will stay dormant through winter if laid in the fall. It's generally agreed upon that giant Weta go through at least 10 molts before reaching their adult stage. A really cool fact is that these giant insects actually filled the role of rodents before land mammals arrived. 
They have an ancient history with New Zealand that dates back 190 million years, which is around 100 million years before mammals appeared here. Now let's get into tree wettas. These are in the genus Hemideina, and as you might expect, are mostly arboreal, which simply means they live in the trees. They like to occupy holes in the trees, which in the insect world are referred to as galleries. You might notice a trend with that word, and it's safe to say tunnels created by or used by insects are almost always referred to as galleries. Anyway, these weta like to hide during the day in their trees and come out at night to feed on leaves, fruits, and other smaller insects. These ones can be found throughout New Zealand, except for Southland and Lowland Otago. Now there are seven species of tree weta, and these insects are social, with males often having a harem of up to 10 females. These harems are usually hidden within a hole or crevice of a tree, and males will often fight each other to gain control of each other's harems. Male tree weta actually have larger heads than females, with really strong jaws that they use to headbutt and fight each other. You ever see two dogs trying to one-up each other by opening their mouths as wide as possible and clashing heads? Well, think of it like that, but instead of doggos, it's massive crickets. Tree wettas are not as large as the weta punga, but they are still larger than your average cricket with their size ranging from 4 to 6 centimeters or 1.5 to 2.3 inches. They also have large spikes on their hind legs, which when brushed against the spikes on their abdomen, create a loud rasping noise. These weta will also lift their hind legs in a menacing way if threatened to make themselves appear larger. And upon lowering, this is when they create their warning calls. Before we move on to the next group of wettas, there is an honorable mention for the tree wettas, which goes to the mountain stone weta, or Hemideina maori. This tree weta no longer lives in the trees, and has actually evolved to use crevices and other rocky hideouts in their alpine habitat. These ones can be found in the southern alps of New Zealand at elevations of 1,100 to 1,500 meters. Now because these insects have adapted to a colder environment, they can actually survive being frozen solid. They are the world's largest insect capable of doing this, and maybe unsurprisingly they also have a very long lifespan as well. Up to 8 years in fact. Sometimes it takes 4 years just to reach sexual maturity, because the climate is so rough. Now, if you don't like the cold and harsh Alps, but want to see one of these, you can also find them at lower elevations on the islands of Mo'uwaho and Mo'utapu in Lake Wanaka, which is a very large lake in southern New Zealand. Next up on our list would be the ground wettas. There are over 30 species of ground weta believed to be in New Zealand, and they are all in the genus Hemiandrus. These weta live in holes, or under rocks and moss, and can be found throughout New Zealand on both Northland and Southland, as well as some offshore islands, and even in Australia. These weta do not have ears on their legs the same way other wettas do, and as a result, they don't communicate through sounds in the air. They actually drum their bellies on leaves of shrubs and ferns or other substrates which can easily transmit vibratory Morse codes. These weta are usually on the smaller side when compared to the others, with the smallest having an adult length of 7 millimeters, and the largest being 30 millimeters or 1 inch in length. Ground wettas are omnivores, which feed at night on fruits or smaller insects. The females usually have long ovipositors, but some species don't, which makes them difficult to differentiate from the males. This is actually where the genus name Hemiandrus comes from, because Hemiandrus translates to half male. Now, speaking of rock wettas, let's move on to cave wettas, and there are 60 or so species within the family Raphidophoridae. These weta have very long antennae and long legs built for jumping, and they can actually jump 3 meters high. Cave wettas are nocturnal and feed on plants, but not the leaves. They also feed on fungi, dead insects, and lichens. The crickets are docile 
and are actually found most in leaf litter, logs, in between rocks, and tree holes. But there are of course species which live in caves as well. These weta also lack hearing organs similar to the ground wettas and rely on vibrations through the ground to communicate. They are also on the smaller size for a weta, with many only being a few centimeters in length. But there is one very large cave weta, which has a total length from the end of its antennae to the feet of its hind legs, reaching a whopping 40 centimeters. That's over a foot long of weta, but the body itself is small. Now, last but definitely not least, it's time to talk about the tusked wettas, which there are three known species. There's the Northland tusked wettas, scientifically known as Anisora nicobarica, and the Mercury Island tusk wettas, or Motueta isolata, and lastly, Motueta riparia, which can be found in the Raokumara range of North Island. These wettas are named for their large tusks, which males use to fight each other. Similar to how the tree weta males fight using their large mandibles, and as a result, the female tusked wettas do not have these long tusks at all, and more closely resemble a ground weta. As far as behaviors go, it seems a shared trait among these are that males duel using their tusks, as well as scraping the tusks together to make warning sounds. Otherwise, the three species are pretty different. For example, the Northland Tusk Weta more closely resembles a tree Weta and has similar behavior in terms of living in trees with harems. But these ones actually plug up the galleries they live in using shavings and debris mixed with their saliva, as opposed to a tree Weta which just simply leaves the door wide open. Now the Mercury Island Wettas are more close in behavior to ground Wettas and take refuge in the soil. These weta used to be found only on the middle island of the Mercury Islands, but has since either gone extinct on that island or dropped to such a low population that they can no longer be tracked. The good news is that a breeding project was started just before they disappeared, and there are new successful populations on the other islands. The last species, referred to as Motoweta riparia, is a moderately sized weta up to 36 millimeters in length, or 3.6 centimeters. Now, if you're a US listener, that equates to 1.3 inches or so. This one is unique because unlike Motueta isolata, this riparia species is found along the coast of Northland in large numbers, despite being a ground weta surrounded by predators. Now, this weta does have a really cool defense mechanism that the others don't. And that would be to dive into streams and remain underwater until the surrounding area becomes safe again. Wettas in general are food for introduced mammals like rodents and cats, but they are also preyed upon by lizards, such as the tuatara and native birds like the kiwi and weka. Fortunately, there have been great strides in the protection of these incredible insects, and a lot of care is continuing to be put into their conservation. Now, before I wrap up today's episode, I have a fun story regarding Weta that Jamie gave me. See, Jamie's parents used to have a cat named Tawa. I love that name, by the way. Which would actually bring Weta to their front doorstep and leave them there as gifts. I think anyone with an outdoor cat has experienced these kinds of gifts before. But in this case, Tawa was always bringing home live Weta and dropping them off at the front door near their shoes. Now, as we mentioned earlier, Weta can make warning signals with their legs when threatened. So whenever Tawa brought one home, they could clearly hear angry warning calls of a Weta. They actually had to check their shoes too to make sure none were in there. Now, I've heard of snakes and scorpions and spiders in shoes, but having a Weta that's a new one. If you'd like to see pictures of all the different kinds of Wettas, make sure to check out the Instagram or the Facebook page. Links to those will of course be in the episode description as well as the show notes. Jamie also sent me a hand-drawn picture of a Weta, which I will also be posting on the Instagram. If you yourself have an idea or something you want me to talk about on the podcast, 
definitely don't hesitate to send me an email at insectsfordummies at gmail.com. And of course, if you're enjoying the podcast, please make sure to hit that rate button on Spotify or whatever platform you listen. It honestly helps the podcast a huge amount. As always, thanks for listening, and you'll hear from me again next week.